If you are an aviation enthusiast or simply interested in the history of the Second World War, you probably know the classic planes of the time, like the legendary P-51 Mustangs, the B-17 Flying Fortresses, or the P-57 Thunderbolts, and I'm sure there's something curious about these that you probably can't explain. These had a very shiny, flashy paint. Just a few months ago, we discussed the intriguing yellow color of German planes, certainly something fascinating. But today we're going to talk about something even more intriguing, the shiny silver that covered American planes starting from 1943. And the question we all ask ourselves, why did the Americans stop using camouflage and replace traditional colors with this striking finish, to call it in some way? During the early stages of the war, the camouflage strategy was crucial to protect the planes. Green and blue colors were used so that the planes could blend in with their surroundings, green with the land and jungles and blue with the sky and sea. But suddenly in 1943, all this changed dramatically. The planes began to be built with a bright silver finish now. How is it that this very visible color became the norm? If camouflage in the air and at airfields helped keep planes safe from enemy attacks, why was it abandoned? Next, we will tell you the reason behind this surprising, unprecedented transformation in military history. In 1943, the situation in the skies of Europe had changed significantly. The Allies were achieving air superiority over the Germans. It's true that although attacks were still happening, German fighters were no longer such a constant threat. This had a major impact on the way flights and missions were approached in the conflict. Now, camouflage was mainly used to disguise the planes both in flight and on the ground, especially at airfields where the planes were more vulnerable to bomber attacks. But by 1943, the danger of being attacked at airfields had decreased considerably due to the air superiority of the Allies. Also, if you think about it, camouflage was no longer as useful in the air especially with the advancement of radar technology and other detection systems that the Germans had at their disposal on the ground. Fighters no longer relied so much on their ability to hide in the sky. Pilot visibility was no longer the most crucial factor in air combat. But probably the fundamental factor that the Americans considered was the following. Did you know that the pain used to coat World War II planes was very heavy? Imagine this. Each gallon of paint weighed about 4 kilograms. That means if a plane, a large one like a bomber, receives several layers of this paint, it could gain tens of kilos, hundreds of kilos, or even several tons of weight. The additional weight affected the speed and maneuverability of the plane. The solution was simple. If they removed the paint, the planes became lighter, faster, and above all, more agile. And not only that, but it also significantly reduced the production times of the aircraft something absolutely essential when it came to keeping up the manufacturing pace to feed the growing demand for planes in the conflict. But the change was not as simple as removing the paint and that's it. What really happened was that the planes began to come out of the factories with a polished steel finish, revealing the bare metal that made up the body of the aircraft. This finish gave them a shiny silver appearance. The main advantage of this finish, in addition to reducing weight, production times were significantly accelerated. The factories, of course, could produce more planes in less time. Of course, some might think that the shine of the planes in the air would make them easier to detect. But by that point in the conflict, it was something dispensable, and we will talk about this last point shortly. And what about corrosion? Of course, with unpainted planes, a new concern arose corrosion. The planes were exposed to air conditions to the salinity of the sea and to the inclemency of the weather. To combat this special finishing techniques were applied during manufacturing. The surfaces of the planes were polished to ensure that there were no grooves where water could enter. After this process, the insignias and characteristic paints of the aviation component where the plane was going to be used were painted, still being mandatory despite the elimination of the paint in addition, the planes went through maintenance periods to avoid, of course, that corrosion affected this structure. The quality of the finish was key for these planes to be able to withstand adverse weather conditions. But of course, not everything was perfect. By the time these planes arrived in early 1944 in England, the veteran pilots on the battlefield often complained that the planes shone too much under the sun. 
which made them more visible from great distances. Even if they were in a certain position relative to the sun, they could shine extremely. But was this a real problem? Actually, not so much. Although the brightness was evident, in practice planes were already being detected mainly by other, much more sophisticated detection methods, as we saw in this particular video. Radars, sound detectors and more, not so much for visibility. In addition, the noise of the engines was also an easy signal to detect enemies, and of course the vapor trail that they left when being used, the risk of being seen by the human eye in the air, was reduced as the war progressed, and with the massive air battles at that time, the need to hide became increasingly secondary. The importance of quick identification became crucial. As air battles became more intense, pilots needed to be able to quickly distinguish between enemies and friends. In a sky full of planes where quick maneuvers were key, immediate differentiation became the vital factor to avoid friendly fire. The silver of the bare metal somehow fulfilled this purpose. It was so unique and bright that there was no way to confuse an allied plane with an enemy. Even from years before this decision, the German planes were already using colors like yellow on their aircraft to differentiate themselves in the Battle of England, which gave them many advantages. The Allies probably took note of this and adopted a similar strategy to avoid confusion during the huge air battles that were looming after 1943. The silver as paint was also considered as a solution to withstand the temperature of inclement environments. In the final stages of the conflict and when the Havilland Mosquito planes arrived in Australia, the Australian Air Force noticed something curious about these, and it was that these planes were severely affected by the harsh Australian summer, which used to even reach 45 degrees Celsius. The plywood that made up the fuselage of these would expand and become brittle when exposed too much to the sun. Among so many proposed solutions, the definitive one was the most effective and it was to coat the planes with silver paint. This silver finish helped to reflect the sun's heat, keeping the temperature inside the plane much cooler and preventing structural damage to the wood. The silvering was a tactical war strategy that also influenced post-war aviation. As the Cold War approached, the silver finish on planes became a standard for American aircraft. Even the Soviets thought it was a good idea at the beginning of the Cold War, so in the end, the metallic shine of World War II planes was not just an aesthetic or fashionable matter, it was a strategic decision based on practical factors, weight reduction, improved agility, faster production times, and of course, the need for quick identification in combat. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you next time. Goodbye.